Howdy everyone, welcome to the CCL Halftime Show. I'm Kyle Ferguson, and today I get to sit down with Healer Main, Storm Esports' BBJ. Welcome BBJ, congrats on an awesome season so far. Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, 2-0, good start. Last season uh, on 30k, started 0-2, so hopefully we don't do the opposite, because I think we started 0-2 and then won our next three or four, so hopefully we keep the win streak going. Well, and you also got second place in the icebreaker. So a brand new team kind of came together and immediately hit the ground running. How do you think that worked out? Uh, well, I think we're, you know, pretty competent players all individually. And then because we have two players that don't talk a ton, right? Ivy doesn't talk at all. And Kepi, I mean, he understands English pretty well and he can speak it when he needs to. But most of the time he's pretty quiet. So pretty much we're all just following Lauber unless I say not to or Quaza does. And... <laughs> pretty much all on the same page the whole time that was definitely when everyone saw the team coming together that was the combination everyone was most interested in is how lobber and bbj would combine together to make a force that either would die a bit or stop each other from dying yeah i think our uh, deaths have been surprisingly low so far this season but i guess we've had kind of easier teams in the first two weeks so maybe they'll spike up later in the season Definitely seems a little about that. Do you think you guys have kind of figured out the teams that you're facing or your particular comps and play styles just gel well? Uh, yeah, I think we all are pretty aggressive players. So, you know, going in is pretty natural for all of us, which helps. You know, we don't have to try and make someone more aggressive than they are. You know, honestly, it's more about getting Kepi to maybe back out more than he does right now because sometimes, you know, we're saying they're coming, get out, and he just, uh, you know, keeps going. Got to get that top hero damage every game. So what does a engage like what happened this past weekend? Anubrak sitting in a bush. You take a wild guess that he happens to be sitting there and then Lauber immediately follows up. How did that execution take place on the team? Uh, I think either the objective or the Rainer Raider, one of them gave us vision of him walking in the bush before oh. he got stealth. And then Lauber just said, hey, this guy's in the bush, kill him. And then he jump stuns. I, you know, pretty sure I threw my combo before the stun even hit because I trusted. And then, uh, yeah snowball the fight from there okay it removes a little bit of the magic and we from what we yeah. saw it, it was just completely blind you were just gonna random stukov combo a bush and just happen to find the enemy tank there yeah I don't, I don't know if we full saw him going into the bush but we saw him like walking that way and you know if a new walking towards that direction he's probably gonna sit in that bush has the healer and support meta changed up a lot from season one and let's just ignore the medallion times of of last year yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've blocked that from my memory completely. Um, I guess Lucio's more in than he was. Anna's maybe less relevant than she was, I feel like, a bit. Uh, Malfurion's kind of back as well with his new level one root talent. Uh, other than that, it's still, you know, Stukov, Deckard, Brightwing, those types of healers. So a, a little variation, but not a major change. You know, no, like, Lili's spiking up or anything like that, thankfully. Yeah, I we all kind of thought that was going to take place, but you were on the Brightwing train in season one for a very long time. And eventually those nerfs kind of rolled in. I'm sure Medallion had a play in that, but you've also moved a little bit away from Deckard. 100% win rate Stukov right now in season two. Uh, do you see yourself working in anything else? I've seen some Anduins around. Oof, yeah, I mean, only, only lost this season was on Anduin, so putting that one away i guess uh <laughs> i mean but... we worked in the other games don't don't give up there's a lot of anduin yeah, yeah, fans yeah. out there yeah they're all in my chat trying to get me to play anduin i don't like the hero in storm league it's too team reliant for me that's but, fair that's fair uh yeah i mean i think there's probably some heroes that maybe are on the niche end but i don't know it feels pretty good to play like stukov deckard uh even anna i think right now Could probably put season play and this weekend, you're going to be fighting Simplicity, who 3 their first opponent, Onyx, went on to get two off of Wildheart. Are you guys concerned about that team at all? Uh, thinking about them? Uh, I mean, we're thinking about them, obviously, so we play them, but I don't think we're very concerned. I think they looked pretty weak this weekend against Wildheart. Even if they would have won game three, I would have said they looked, you know, kind of... Hmm sloppy at best it seems like they're kind of back to their regular season form that they were in last season where they didn't take it too seriously played a little bit kind of got you know i mean they ended what sixth place and then in playoffs they kind of started playing a bunch more turned it around i guess they also had the roster swap come in with legacy and masca so that helped them too but uh yeah i don't think we're too worried about them 
Well, since you seem to have a, an idea of every team going on right now, let's go a little deeper. Uh, the weekend after that, you're going to fight Wildheart, who has done really well. Are you guys concerned about them? Uh, I don't know about concerned. I mean, Wildheart's always interesting because, you know, you can't really get scrim practice for a team like Wildheart because they're going to play stuff that you're not playing against pretty much ever. So it's more about, you know, kind of theorizing what will work well against their drafts and then hoping it comes to fruition. So... You know, I'll leave that up to Kepi. I'll let the Korean mind go to work and see if we come out on top. Some of the teams we haven't have, haven't talked about yet. Are any of those interesting to you or you think have a good power ranking that hasn't quite shown itself yet? Uh, I think Onyx is kind of sleeper right now. I think uh, their early games look really well, actually. Like, really good. They uh, follow Bad Benny around a lot. He makes a lot of plays. And then, uh, I don't know, just late game, they seem to flounder a bit. But I think that to clean that up, they could, you know, potentially be a top four playoff team. What about, despite being, you know, 0-2 right now. What about uh, 30k, one of the teams that we heard the most buzz about when they initially put together their roster? I mean, yeah, I think 30k is potentially the best team right now. You know, it's hard to see without the top teams clashing too much, but uh, I have them number one in my power ranks right now. I think they're really strong. And then, uh, I mean, we'll see. We play them the last week, I believe. So hopefully, you know, potentially both teams go in undefeated. Could be a bit of a showdown. Looking forward to it. Are you guys cooking up anything interesting versus simplicity for this weekend? Anything in particular come to mind that you'd be able to share? Uh, I don't think so. I think we're probably going to just play our style. You know, we'll let them draft whatever they want, and then we'll just pick what we like and outplay them, I think. Solid moves. I like the idea. Would, would you be interested in getting back to Deckard because I know you played him a little bit but he's kind of fallen off it seems at least in the picks for your team uh yeah I mean I always like Deckard always willing to play him I think uh not having a cleanse right now feels kind of weak you know Stukov doesn't have a cleanse either but he kind of makes up for it with his stupid broken uh 75 physical armor at level four and then he also has like so much of his own CC that isn't really as like counterable right like Deckard root and sleep there's more counterplay, you can interrupt it easier, whereas Stukov, you know, you combo root somebody, they have nothing to do. They're basically stunned in a puddle that silences them for two seconds. That's awesome. It's been really cool seeing Storm Esports just immediately gel, at least from the perspective of the audience. And you guys just hit that ground running. Are there any shout outs you'd like to do here as we end? Uh, shout outs to, you know, all the Storm people behind the scene, making our lives easy. Appreciate it. Uh, shout out to my teammates, obviously, carrying me because I'm washed up. Uh, and then Where, okay okay where did this come from where did this idea that BBJ struggles out there because I, I see your stream where you play awesomely you, you light bomb yourself because you can't trust anybody else and you get the kills I, I see you bring it on the bright wing where where did this begin uh, I mean they see me play heroes that I'm bad at then they flame me oh. my Malfurion pretty bad right now my Anna was really bad I spent like a whole day playing nothing but Anna, so now I'm a little bit better, but they see uh, you know, they see the heroes that I'm bad at, not just the, the Stukov <laughs> plays and the Deckards. Hey, if it wins, no no need to change it up. But please continue your shout outs. Uh and then, you know, shout out to CCL and all the production crew behind the scenes. Appreciate you guys. And that's it. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you everybody for watching, and we'll see you soon.